the, the second piece of this intentional way of kind of undoing our conditioning, because that's really what we're doing. The only reason we have to be intentional about joy is because we have the conditioning to resist it, right? So the second piece is to become familiar, more intimate with the moments where we actually are feeling a sense of being enlivened, loving, appreciating. In other words, really sinking into them. So what that means is, and usually it's the simple things. What that means is noticing the simple things, whether it's the expression on a loved one's face, you know, your child, the look in their eyes, or the sound of the rain, or a fragrance, or walk, just a feeling of walking on the earth, soft ground. Just let your attention stay with it. It's savor it. Take a moment to savor. And it is simple. This is Nietzsche. He says, for happiness, how little suffices for happiness. The least thing precisely, the gentlest thing, the lightest thing. A lizard's rustling, a breath, a whisk, an eye glance. Little maketh up the best happiness. There's also a receptivity when we're doing that appreciating. It's like letting, letting this life happen. Rilke described it so well, you know the beauty and the terror. This is Cahil Gibran. He says, And forget not that the earth delights to feel your bare feet, and the winds long to play with your hair. So you just feel this belonging and engage in it. So for me, I had mentioned that, you know, I was wary about this week, so I was saying, okay, and because this is something I, when I'm remembering, I practice just to, to pause at those things. And so, and so I did, and I, we have, there's, many of you might have noticed the goldfinch are at their, like, peak brightness right now, so I'd watch the darting goldfinch and say, okay, pause, and it's just, like, taking in this, this play of light, of gold flashing, you know, it was so, so amazing. Our, our, you know, I have a, a very dear friend who's at a phase of life where he's trusting himself more, and I could feel him, him just more composed and coming from a deeper place of confidence. And that brought up this joy, like I just said, okay, joy. It's called mudita, this sympathetic joy in another person's joy. My mom's about to go up to uh, her summer place, and and, and we both love being in an open car, so we, we went for quite a long drive in the country with the car with the top down and the, the breeze and feeling just that companionship. And everything in me was going, okay, this, this, just this, just this. And it has that quality of this is it, this moment is it. So try that pausing because it makes a, it's amazing to just pause and appreciate and in some way bow. And this is uh, how one Zen master put it. He said, people often ask me how Buddhists answer the question, does God exist? The other day I was walking along the river. I was suddenly aware of the sun shining through the bare trees, its warmth, its brightness, all this completely free, completely gratuitous, simply there for us to enjoy. And without knowing it, completely spontaneously, my two hands came together And I realized I was making gusho, which is a bow. And it occurred to me that this is all that matters, that we can bow, that we can take a deep bow. Just this. Just this. That's the spirit of it, that that we find our ways back to that sincerity and openness that really allows this flow to move through us. And there is something beautiful about bowing. It doesn't belong to any one religion. There's something about feeling that sense of of honoring and cherishing. It's kind of letting the small self just open itself to this vast mystery that we belong to. So again, let's just reflect. Let's, Let's practice a little. Take a moment. So we we practice by sensing what we love, what we cherish, 
letting it come to mind, and in some way really appreciating it. So I'd like to invite you in this pause, this kind of training the heart to turn towards joy. You might start with just that uh, practice of the smile, a slight smile at the mouth, the inside of the mouth smiling. It actually lets the whole nervous system relax into a mode that's very receptive. The eyes soft. And it's really your intention to, to open to this wholeness that, that allows what we love. And let come to mind something that you deeply appreciate. And it could be something in nature. It could be a person, music, something about the practice or the path that you're on. And you might explore, as something comes to mind, just pausing with it, hanging out with it a little. Just sensing your appreciation. You might even whisper thank you or bow. You can bow inwardly, physically bow, but in some way the spirit of appreciating. So just take a few moments. One, selecting one thing you just maybe were already meditating with, one thing now that you very much love or appreciate in your life. And sensing in a very visceral way, your heart, the experience of loving or appreciating. Just sense what that's like in your heart. What's the felt sense of that? When you're really appreciating what you appreciate. So just saying yes to the love itself, letting it be as big as it wants to be. Noticing when you're appreciating, when you're loving, the quality of presence that's right here, the space, how large it is. Openness and flow. When we're finding true happiness or joy, we'll notice in the background there's this profound sense of presence. There's openness, awakeness, flow. So you might explore that. Uh, just as this a commitment, if you choose to do it, to choose happiness, to, to pause a bit and savor And sense when you do what's really allowing the joy to be there is this quality of presence in the background, this alert inner stillness, this space. Okay, so take a few breaths and let's open your eyes and we'll just a few more pieces to this I want to explore with you. So we're talking about different ways of loving what is. And we love what is by saying yes to what's exactly right here. And we love what is by remembering to really take our time and get familiar with the experience of loving and savoring itself. Like, get to know it. You know, we have joyful moments, but we speed right through them. And so we don't think of ourselves as joyful. Slow it down. Oh, okay, this is a moment that this 
this fragrance right now, or the look in this person's eye, or just this feeling of the breeze. Slow it down. What's it like? And you'll find that same space of presence there when you're really enjoying. So another way of loving what is, is opening to possibility. Because part of what is in this fertile void of a li- there's this void that aliveness is springing out of, is this infinite possibility. And what blocks joy is a sense of expecting things to be a certain way and usually expecting them to, in some way, be a limiting future. Not really open to the possibility of, of loving without holding back. Not really opening to that. But that's possible that we could take the chance and really trust more and let our love be more full, to really sense that possibility, to sense the possibility of awakening, of full realization, that we can wake up out of the stories that are narrow and really inhabit a very lucid, very present, very tender awareness. The possibility of really serving from our hearts in a way that can be touching and healing, really giving of ourselves. Opening to possibility. This is C.S. Lewis. He says, all joy reminds. It is never possession. He says, joy intuits what is about to be, intuits what has always been, our original nature, the truth of wholeness. In other words, there's a sense of mystery and openness to possibility. And I've seen this very much personally when I've worked with people, that those that are not open to possibility are basically depressed and their life energy is held down. And it's, of course, a spectrum. It's not completely not open and it's not completely open. But to the degree that we're open to possibility, that we sense that tonight... Tonight has this possibility, not just, it's not like we're coming to the end, you're going to go to bed and then it'll be tomorrow. It's like tonight has this possibility of, of having a meaningful, tender, real contact with somebody. Or being more at home in yourself or touching into something that really matters. Or stepping outside into the almost summer evening and really feeling the air and being here more. Tonight's got possibility. A lot of times I'll talk about this and and I'll get a response that, yeah, but we're impermanent, we're going to die. It's, you know, basically aging, sickness, and death. And so that's the possibility I'm opening to. And, you know, hey, what about that, you know? And... um, so I, what I'd like to share is, uh, this is a story a friend told me recently, a couple that um, loved traveling, traveled all around the world, and he was a few years ago diagnosed with Parkinson's, and it's been pretty steady that he's, they've been able to do less and less. Um, but the friends talk about how they continue to be this very um, lively in their own way, very engaged, very open. There's this capacity for joy, even though their lives from the outside look smaller and smaller and smaller. So uh, one of the, they shared a bit of what was allowing them to have that. And the woman said that they make a conscientious effort to make each day as good as it can be. Now that sounds really simplistic. But if you say, well, what if my intention was to have this evening be as good as it can be? Inherent in that intention is a sense of this real possibility. It can be. That we can get sick and get old and die and in the midst of that wake up and and discover a timeless love. And stuff happens and it can be as good as we could possibly imagine if we're willing to imagine. So this is what they would do. And, and this was really um, a part of, of their kind of process, of, of their, that intention. And it brought up memories that actually were kind of things that happened in their past that let them have that attitude. And she described this. She said their family had just moved to a new house. And 
her mom wanted to have you know a picnic and take them to the park and really celebrate bringing their new home. So they packed up the picnic basket and the blankets and this and that. And then, of course, as you might imagine, it all started to rain. Here's what the mom did. They went up to this empty attic, and uh, it was you know unfinished. And, and, and this woman specifically called the smell of the new wood. And they laid out their blanket there, and they had their picnic in the attic, and just listened to the sound of the fallen rain. It was as good as it could be. This is why I was so... Uh, you know, touched by the story of this woman in this diversity group that said, I- I'm just, I'm, enough of the grimness, you know. I'm choosing to look towards possibility. I'm choosing happiness. I'm not going to be oppressed by circumstance. So, the given is we're all in the same predicament. Every one of us is going to lose things that are incredibly cherished and dear. Every one of us is living in uncertainty. You know, we, we know that. And it's part of who we are to discover joy in the midst. There is uh, a story, I, I brought up Kasansakis before, so um, with Zorba, so I'll bring up another bit that, another piece of a story that he describes, Zorba encounters an old man who's planting an almond tree. Now, almond trees, if you know anything about them, they take decades to grow. So here's this old guy, and he's planting an, an, an almond tree. And so Zorba says, what, Dad, at your age, planting an almond tree? And the response, I live as if I should never die, and also as if I were going to die any minute. So I live as if I were never going to die, should never die, and as if I were going to die any minute. And if you take the feeling tone of both of those, I should never die, has that sense of just open it, unlimited possibility. You're sensing something eternal, you know, and just opening to that, and that our true nature is boundless. It's kind of got a sense of the absolute, just boundlessness, timeless, not hitched to the small self. Just live it and just let go and invite us to relax and be willing to open into what's here. And then as if I were going to die any minute, in this changing, endlessly changing season of tides and life and death, we love what's here. We just absolutely wholeheartedly embrace what's here. If you knew you were going to die in just a few moments, I can speak for myself, if I knew that I was going to just be gone. What would matter right now is being really, really present and feeling uh, the loving that is true nature, just being in love. And there's a refuge in that. And there's a joy in that. And there's a peace in that. So maybe as, as a way of closing, we'll, we'll practice again, just to, just to say that, um, you know, as I started on purpose by sharing Gide's uh, quote, because, uh, because I realized so much this week, it was very pronounced to me. I, I really was not entering the week with a joyful mindset. I truly was not. I was, I was tight. And it was amazing to have this intention to pause and wake it up. And I had a really interesting week. It was a big mix, but there was a current of kind of amusement and joyfulness that kept, got woven through that, that left me feeling more whole. I wasn't as much in my story of, of the leaguered self. You know? So... You might remember Hafiz, he says, the difference between us and the saints that are really filled with joy. He says, the difference between us and the saints that are really filled with joy. He says, I'm afraid we or you think you still have a thousand serious moves. Isn't that true? That we have this feeling we're on our way somewhere and we've got all this serious stuff we have to go do? 
that doesn't uh, create an atmosphere for joy. So that's one of the put it, put it down things. David Budbell puts it this way. He says, and this is called bugs in a bowl, different attitude. He says, I say that's right. Up the sides and back down, round and round, over and over again. Sit in the bottom of the bowl, head in your hands, cry and moan. I look around. See your fellow bugs. Say, hi, how you doing? Say, nice bowl. <laughs> nice bowl. So, okay, so let's, we'll practice a little and then close. Very, very simple right now. Let's just keep it really simple, close in. Sense in your own way, your own, from your own sincerity, your intention to be all that you are, to open to the life that's here. And in your own words, to allowing the life, loving the life that's here. And you might, in a very simple way, explore for yourself what it means in this moment to love what is. Sensing the possibility of a heart that can hold the 10,000 joys, the 10,000 sorrows. We'll close with uh, a Native American planting initiation song that expresses the spirit of tonight's talk. I have made a footprint a sacred one. Through it the blades push upward. Through it the blades radiate. Over it the blades float in the wind. Over it I bend the stalk to pluck the ears. Over it the blossoms lie gray. Smoke arises from my house. There is cheer in my house. I live in the light of day. Namaste and thank you.